Hi friends. Well, what's on my mind today? Like a lot of days, what's on my mind is, well, what in the world am I going to talk about today? Uh, I do have a couple of videos coming up that I want to talk to you about. I got this in the mail today. It's a pair of mountain hiking shoes. So I'm going to need to take a hike to do a review on them. These were sent to me to do a review for free. And uh, maybe I'll hike back up to the waterfall again, or maybe I'll go on a different hike. Uh, there are several of them up here in the mountains above the north shore of Lake Chapala. But anyway, so I need to be doing a, 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 a hiking shoe review. <laughs> and what better place to do it than in the mountains up above Ahihik. And the other thing I got, it's in this box, is I got another dash cam. It's a newer model and it has some features that I am excited about so uh, I need to take a hike with the shoes and I need to drive you around for another video about what's on the north shore of Lake Chapala. So I have those videos coming up but today I thought it's time for me to tell you a story. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. You know, the name of my channel is JC Travel Stories, and when we go to the motorhome in a couple of weeks, there'll be some travel stories. But today, I thought I'd tell you a story about some potential travel that never happened. For many years, my daily companion and best friend here in Ajijic, Mexico, was my buddy named Jesus. And um, Jesus passed of cancer last November, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not making a, a video for a bereavement or looking for um, bereavement wishes. He was a good friend and he had um, a very interesting and wonderful life with a wonderful family. He was only 71 when he passed, but it was a good 71 years and I was privileged to enjoy about 18 of them. Uh, so the story today is about Jesus wanting to travel. Jesus is a Mexican citizen who was uh, born here in Mexico, grew up in a little town named Las Trojes across the mountains a little ways, and uh, lived most of his life here in Ajijic, Mexico. Um, he came to me one day and he said, I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks and I want to go to California to visit my son and my grand kids. Now he has a lot of family here also, uh, adult sons. He and his adult sons are the people who help me build um, most of my house here. So they, um, they're people very well known to me and to the rest of the neighborhood. They live in the neighborhood. Uh, for many years they've worked for uh, another neighbor and uh, actually uh, Jesus built one of the houses on that property, uh, pretty much all by himself. And uh, he also was working as a gardener and handyman for another neighbor. And you'll uh, find that these are important things to know as the story progresses. The time he came to me and said, uh, I want to go to California for a couple of weeks. And I asked him, are you going to fly? And I didn't think he'd ever been on a plane before. And he hadn't been on a plane before. And he said, no, I'm going to take the bus to Tijuana and I will um, cross there and go up to LA where my son lives. And I asked him, do you have a passport? 
And he said, no, I have a brother in Tijuana and we look about the same and I'll use his passport and um, his identification to go across and he can go across because he um, has a, a travel visa. I was uh, wet behind the ears about how the world works. I don't want this to be about the current political uh, controversies in the United States or about the immigration crisis on the southern border of the United States. This story predates the current president and the last president and has nothing to do with the politics that's in the news today. This is just a personal story about my friend Jesus and about how naive I was about how um, the world works between Mexico and the United States. When you come to the United States um, with a Mexican visa, you're in a very privileged situation. When you come to Mexico as a U.S. citizen, you are welcomed with open arms. Uh, you need a passport, but uh, your travel visa as a U.S. citizen coming into Mexico is just an automatic part of your airline ticket. It's like 20 some dollars and this is transparent. You don't even know about it till you're on the plane and they hand you a piece of paper as they're coming in for a landing to fill out uh, your travel visa form. So for me to think that Jesus was going to illegally enter California with his brother's identification and Mexican passport, I said, well, why don't you just do it legally? And his reply was, oh, muy difícil, very hard. But I kind of insisted and said, listen, I'm going to help you and we're going to do this legally because I want to learn how it works too. So here's how it works. First of all, um, we contacted the uh, U.S. consulate at the embassy in Guadalajara, and um, we found out that there are rules and regulations and timetables, and here's what he needed. He needed to have a Mexican passport. He needed to have a copy of his um, employment. He needed to have um, letters from his employers. He needed to have uh, his marriage certificate. He needed to, of course, to have his uh, um, Mexican election card. And he needed to have uh, 110 U.S. dollars uh, in pesos, of course, but he had to have that. Oh, and he had to have a Mexican bank account. So we began to put together all of that stuff for him. He didn't have a bank account. He didn't have a Mexican passport. Um, he did have um, uh, his uh, election card and Mexican identification, and he did have a uh, title to his house, and he did have uh, his marriage certificate. Anyway, uh, we finally got those things together. It took several months, and this was from like uh, December until about uh, the middle of March. We finally got those things together. We got him a Mexican passport. We opened up a bank homer account, a bank account for him here. Um, we got him a, some kind of a paperwork from the school that showed that he had a 12 year old um, son in school here in Mexico. We got all of these things together that he needed. The marriage certificate, the passport. We made a $110 deposit and um, once we got all of those things together it came to pass that we called the U.S. consulate in Guadalajara and made an appointment. Called them up, this is the middle of March, 
and uh, the conversation went like, okay, uh, you have an appointment, it's uh, on the 21st of April, a month and a week later, at 8 in the morning. So it took like five weeks after we got the paperwork together to get an appointment. And of course he had to go to a bank and make a deposit of 110 U.S. dollars. So we did that and um, got that all taken care of. We, the appointed day came to pass and we went to Guadalajara. And again, I was naive. With my blue U.S. passport, I walked past a line that wrapped around the building and walked up to the guy with the big gun at the head of the line. The guy facing the line, not a guy in the line. And said, showed him my, my blue U.S. passport and said, we have an appointment at 8 a.m. And he said, what for? I said, Jesus is getting a travel visa. And he said, so are all the rest of these people who have an appointment at 8 o'clock. Literally, there might have been 300 people in this line. It wrapped all the way down the block and around the corner and around the next corner. Uh, and he said to me in a very gruff voice, and with your U.S. citizenship, you can't come into this side of the building. If you have business at the embassy, you have to go around to the other side of the block. Well, I knew about that entrance because I had been in there a few times. I applied for my Social Security when I turned 65 in uh, that building in Guadalajara. So I knew how to show my U.S. passport and get in, but not on that side of the building and not at 8 o'clock. I sat across the street in a restaurant, an open-air restaurant on the sidewalk by the back door of the U.S. consulate. Um, it's the exit for non-U.S. citizens, for foreign nationals, when they have business there. I sat there for three hours watching people come out with drooping shoulders and sad eyes and in some case heavy tears, being, having been denied their travel visas. Three hours I sat there. I talked to uh, several people sitting there waiting. One of them, uh, her story just struck me dumb. I, I, to this day, I don't understand it. The story is that uh, she had parents who were business people in Guadalajara, and they started um, another branch of their business um, in uh, Anchorage, Alaska. And as the years went by, they had a son who was born in uh, Anchorage, Alaska. So he uh, had dual citizenship, even though his parents were just Mexican uh, citizens, not U.S. citizens, but they had permission to travel into the United States because of their business. Or, and um, they had a daughter then who was born in Guadalajara several years later. It's the daughter that I was talking to at the time. She's about 35 years old and she uh, had come out of the uh, same door at the back of the embassy that all the rest of them were coming out for hours. And she was um, she was not as upset as some of the others but I learned that the reason was because she'd been through this several times. She had never been able to travel to her parents' home in Alaska because she could not get a travel visa. The first time she had applied was when she got out of high school. Uh, she had lived with other relatives here in Guadalajara um, while her parents uh, came and went to their business up in Anchorage and back to Guadalajara. She stayed with relatives. And uh, as many teenagers do, they, she didn't want to go to another place. She wanted to do her schooling here in Guadalajara with friends that she knew. 
But once out of high school and in college, she applied for a visa to travel to with them to their home in Anchorage. Now, um, she was denied. I don't know why. She didn't know why. Uh, skip ahead a few years. She has applied several more times. At the time I'm talking to her, she is a paralegal for an attorney in Guadalajara. She has still never been able to travel to her parents' home in Alaska. She has applied in three different Mexican states at different U.S. consulates five times and been denied five times. I was talking to her as she exited for the fifth time with a denial of her travel visas. Now what the U.S. worries about is that people are going to travel to the United States and they're going to stay there and try to make a life in the United States. This was not a person who was trying to sneak across the border. This was a person who wanted to fly to Alaska to see a home she'd never been able to see that her parents owned. She wasn't going to Alaska to be a paralegal. <laughs> well employed, well educated, and denied. I do not understand this. When it's so easy for a U.S. citizen to fly down here to Mexico for a vacation. Jesus came out and frankly, the feeling I got from Jesus was, yeah, I told you so and I'm glad we got this over with. Here's how he related the conversation to me after getting to the head of the line after three hours. Uh, they asked him uh, why he was there. He said, I would like to have a visa to travel to California to see family. They said, um, do you have employment in Mexico? He said, yes. They said, show me your IMSS card. That's the Mexican government insurance that all employers are required to give their employees. But part-time employees, uh, are not. it's not required to give it to them. Now, Jesus has three part-time jobs. And he also did odd jobs for other people, too. Not as consistently as for the three of us. And he had those three letters. They never looked at him. Show me your IMSS card. I don't have IMSS. Okay, it's not a real job. Denied. Next. That was the end of the conversation. A few seconds. It was a day that I was not proud to be a U.S. citizen sitting there with all of those um, nice people who just were trying to do it correctly. Jesus never went. Um, he never saw his son and, and those grandkids be, before he passed. It was years ago, and um, it chokes me up a little bit to think about it, but um, it's just one story in all of the stories. I calculated of those 300 people standing there several days a month, with non-refundable 110 U.S. dollar deposits that the U.S. Embassy in Guadalajara is taking in one million dollars a month in denied visa applications for Mexican citizens. I don't know how many U.S. embassies there are in the world But it gets you back to that old saw, follow the money. That's my story for today. Thanks for listening. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.